Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kimberly Johnson, affectionately known as Dr. Kim. I'm a medical doctor and a skincare enthusiast. In this video, I'm here to talk about retinoids or vitamin A. And I want to talk about this because I think most persons only know about retinol and don't know that there's so many other derivatives of vitamin A and that there are safer options because some persons are kind of turned off from retinol because, oh, it dried my skin out and it's irritating and I don't want it. But I'm here to tell you there are less irritating options that won't dry your skin out, that won't burn, that won't cause flaking, yes. So if you like that, stay tuned. But before you go, remember to subscribe to the channel, like, and share the good news about all of these skincare tips with your friends. Remember to follow on Instagram at Skin by Dr. Kim and on Twitter at Skin by Dr. Kim. Stay tuned. So vitamin A or retinoids are important in anti-aging skincare because it's an antioxidant. It's important in hyperpigmentation because it it's a tyrosinase inhibitor so you need to watch that video as well to know what that means it is useful in acne treatment because it's anti-inflammatory because it helps by preventing hyperkeratinization and this is sticking together of skin cells and thus clogging the pores so it prevents this it is important in anti-aging skincare because it increases skin cell turnover what it does it, it, it increases the rate at which new cells are moving from the basal layer of the skin to the surface of the skin. And this is important in getting the fat juicy cells from the basal layer of the skin to the skin surface to replace the dull flattened old cells at the surface of the skin. There's a misconception that retinoids help are exfoliants. They're not exfoliants. They just increase skin cell turnover. Again, they are not exfoliants. As I said before, there are many persons who hate hearing about retinoids because the first thing they're going to say is, it dries my skin out, it makes it irritating, it makes it flake. Well, I'm here to tell you that there are derivatives of vitamin A or retinoid derivatives that are not irritating to the skin. One of the first ones I'll mention and my favorite is retinaldehyde. Now, retinaldehyde is way more effective than retinol, which is the most common one that we know or hear about in skincare products. However, the issue is why we don't see retinaldehyde being used commonly in skincare products is the price point. It is very, very expensive. So a product with retinaldehyde is going to be very expensive, which is why we end up seeing retinol being more commonly used. But retinaldehyde is one of the least irritating, so it can be used daily with no irritation. So an example of this is Avene Retrinal, and this I bought on Amazon, and it was $69, 69 US dollars. <laughs> but it has retinaldehyde, it has relastin, which is an elastin peptide, and it has vitamin E. So it's a superb product. I use it, I can use it every night, and I would never notice that there's something on my skin. There is zero burn, there's zero tingle, there's no flaking, it's moisturizing, it's perfect. And you see results very fast, Trust me, it's very good, but the price point, and there are very little actives, actually there's no other active really and truly, um, for almost $70. But that's just to explain how much retinaldehyde is, but it's a superior retinoid to use. So the next one up would be retinol, which is again, the most common one. Now retinol, can be very irritating at certain percentages. So many times we see it at 1% and that is, that is where we get irritation and we don't want irritation because irritation leads to inflammation and inflammation is what leads to hyperpigmentation. Now at 0.5%, 
retinol is not irritating. So that's a safer percentage to use. And that is what we want for our serums for a lower percentage that is very still effective, but not irritating. So at 0.5%, retinol is tolerable for our skin. So that's what we want to look for when we're buying products. So I have a retinol serum, but it's it's a Paula's Choice 0.3%. So they use 0.3%, but what they did was combine it with 2% Bacuchiol or Bacuchiol, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Now Bacuchiol is a nucleic kid on the block and it's plant-based, but I'll talk about it later on. So they combined it with Bacuchiol and it has peptides and vitamin C derivatives. So that makes it even more potent. So retinol is good. It's not all bad, but it's it depends on the percentage. So if you overdo it, meaning using at 1% or even higher, then you have irritation and flaking and burning and you won't want to use it. So in the right percentage, it can be effective and still not irritating. And then where retinol can also be used is where CeraVe did what they did was use it as an encapsulated form. So CeraVe in their resurfacing retinol serum, they use retinol but encapsulated retinol. And by encapsulating the molecule, it makes it penetrate the skin more so it can get to the dermis. And when it gets to the dermis, that's when it is released. So the retinol is released there. So you have no irritation. So this is a good form for using retinol. So you don't have to use, say, retinaldehyde to get penetration and little irritation. So you encapsulate it and then it is released when it gets to the dermis. And this is also a very, very smart way of using retinol. And what I, what I like with this serum is it also has the three ceramides. So rebuilding the skin barrier and providing hydration. And it also has licorice root extract, um, which is a tyrosinase inhibitor, and that will help with hyperpigmentation. So this is very good for, I would recommend this for persons with um, post-acne hyperpigmentation, whereas the, the Paula's Choice Retinol Plus Bacuchiol Serum, I would say I'd use this mainly for somebody who wants to um, incorporate in their anti-aging skincare. So that's how I'll, you know, pick and choose who I'll give which retinol serum. So this one, because it contains the licorice root extract, I'd more go with somebody who wants, who has acne scarring or hyperpigmentation. And that's because this also has fat soluble vitamin C, which is tetrahexyl decalascorbate, and this will also stimulate collagen. So this is more in keeping with anti-aging. The next thing is that retinol, retinol is very unstable in UV. So retinol cannot, I wouldn't recommend wearing retinol during the daytime. I would prefer you to wear it at nighttime because it, it's going to be very irritating during the daytime. Whereas you may get away with wearing the derivatives of retinol, retinoid, the retinoid or vitamin A derivatives during the daytime. So retinol, you must wear at nighttime to prevent irritation. Another retinoid is retinyl palmitate. It is the least irritating of all the different der derivatives, but it is the least effective. So it is less effective than retinol. But given that it is least irritating, it would be the best option for those with very sensitive skin and it can be used daily. It's used in Dr. V's skincare for her anti-aging range. And it is also used in Dermovia Skin Cycle for their pro-retinol serum because they combine it with um, retinol. So next one up in terms of efficacy would be adapalene and we might know it as epidural or differing. This is more effective than retinaldehyde but it is also more irritating 
um, you can get it over the counter. And it is at 0.1%. It is better tolerated than 0.025% retiny or tretinoin, which is the next one in line. So tretinoin or retiny, which is this, um, is the next in line in terms of effectiveness. But it is also very, very irritating. It is most likely to cause dryness, flaking, irritation. Um, it is not the first line in terms of acne treatment. And it comes in various strengths. So this one that I have here is 0.05%. I used this long ago, not now. This is just an empty packet that I kept um, for you know, demonstration purposes. And when I was using Retin-A, oh my gosh, I had no idea. So I was using Retin-A at night and I was using it with no moisturizer afterwards. So in the mornings I had severe flaking, <laughs> flaking, flaking. And I had photosensitivity, even though I was wearing sunscreen the following morning. I was, when I went out, I was just, it was just, my, my skin was so irritated. Everything I put on my face burnt. The simplest cleanser burnt. It was just a mess. And I kept using it because I wanted glass skin mess. So guys, it's not, trust me, you don't need to be using it. It's usually prescribed here in Jamaica, but I hear in other territories, you can get it without a prescription. But here in Jamaica, it's prescribed by a physician but i would say this should be reserved for very severe acne and if you're going to wear it you need a very good thick moisturizer afterwards but i'd say start at a lower percentage don't go here unless you really need it because it's very very irritating and then the last step would be roaccutane or isotretinoin and this is usually orally given and prescribed again by a physician it requires frequent blood works and the side effects are, again, <sighs> not so favorable. It does cause drying, flaking of the lips in particular. And again, reserved for very severe acne, very severe cystic acne. So you, unless you have very bad acne, you won't even get to this point. Um, all these forms of vitamin E or retinoids that I mentioned are not to be given to women who are pregnant or nursing. And as I said, if you are using vitamin A or retinoid, please ensure, it doesn't matter if it is less irritating, please ensure that you are following up with a moisturizer, a very good moisturizer, preferably a thick fatty moisturizer. So CeraVe moisturizing cream is usually very good. Cetraban is also very good to use afterwards. Paula's, Paula's Choice Omega Complex is also very good to use afterwards. So preferably a thick fatty moisturizer if you've used retinoid during the night. Lastly, I want to mention Bacuchiol or Bacuchiol, whichever way you want to pronounce it. <laughs> So Bakuchiel is the new kid on the block and I'm plugging it here because as I mentioned before, the vitamin A or derivatives of same or retinoids cannot be given to pregnant women. So what happens when they want to, you know, have their anti-aging skincare routines? So Bakuchiel is a plant-based alternative to retinoids or vitamin A. And not only is it anti-aging but it is anti-inflammatory it's an antioxidant it is it doesn't have photosensitivity it is it is photoprotective so it has so many you know functions to it it treats hyperpigmentation as well it helps with texture and it will it will act like a retinol. So it will interact with other antioxidants like vitamin C, for instance, 
um, it will increase the skin's hydration and it is less irritating than retinol and it won't give you the photosensitivity that retinol would. So it can be used in the daytime and the nighttime. So you get, you get to use it twice a day. So it is so good. So you can use it in pregnant women, nursing women. It's plant-based. And so you find that more skincare lines are incorporating it. So as I said, uh, Paula's Choice has already incorporated it in their, in their products with retinol. But Inkylis has is one of those one of the lines that uses it alone. So they have a Bakuchiol moisturizer which just has it without the addition of retinol. So a pregnant woman can use it on its own and get all the wondrous effects of it. So it's a moisturizer, so you can use it day, night, and get all the effects. Um, it's also beneficial in acne treatment because it decreases um, C acne or decreases the occurrence of cystic acne. As I said, it's anti-inflammatory and you can use it to replace salicylic acid. So for instance, if you have some adverse reaction or if you're sensitive to salicylic acid, you can use Bakuchiol. So it's like a wonder drug. It reminds me of niacinamide. <laughs> but yes, so I plug this here as an alternative to retinoids for those who are overly sensitive to retinoids or if you're pregnant and want an alternative to a retinoid. And it helps with hyperpigmentation as it is also a tyrosinase inhibitor. So I hope that helped a bit so you're not so scared of retinoids and you'll be more confident in choosing products for acne, anti-aging and hyperpigmentation when it comes to choosing a vitamin E or retinoid. Stay tuned for more videos guys and remember to watch the others and stay abreast of everything skincare. Bye!